Hi and welcome to the Zonji Land show where everybody's upside down. Every day is upside down day in Zonji Land. And today I have the honor of talking to Paul Twyman. Um, who is, I'd say, the inventor of the 365 challenge and is one of the amazing coaches here in Perth where I'm immersing myself in this great community of handstanders. So just to give you some context, could you please give us a brief overview of your movement background and how you got into hand balancing? Yeah, sure. Um, I've been in the fitness industry now since 2000, so the last uh, like 18, 19 years. Um, I've always I trained previously to that, but it was more um, bodybuilding, traditional training. Um, and then when I moved to Australia 14 years ago, um, I became a personal trainer. And again, just doing that traditional weights and machines and um, but yeah, the traditional training. Um, and then as I got more into the personal training, I was looking for something different and um, more assessment based and a little bit more detailed. And, um, I found Paul Check and I worked with him for a few years and uh, became a Czech practitioner. Mm -hmm. where we'd work on more on the corrective side and that type of thing. Um, but then I quickly, I like to play around on my hands. Um, I could sort of walk on my hands. I'd done some gymnastics very early on as a child mm -hmm. and just kept that up as playing around. So like walking on my hands, I could hold a 20, 30 second handstand. Um, so I was always found that interesting. Um, and then when I saw CrossFit and them playing on the gymnastic rings and um, some of the strength work they were doing, the body weight strength, I found that interesting. So I started to play with that. So combined that with the corrective exercise I was doing. So I was working with clients on some um, CrossFit style training mm -hmm. and um, corrective exercise. Um, and then I found a post um, that Edo Portel was coming to Perth. Mm -hmm. um, so I started researching his training because I found that really interesting. Um, and I saw a picture of Edo on a, a one arm handstand. He was in a diamond position in a one arm. Um, and I looked at that and I was like, I want to be able to do a one arm handstand. Mm. So, um, and that was when I'd started posting a little bit on Instagram and was following a few people on there. And I saw some. There was a yoga lady doing uh, like a 365 challenge of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was like inversions or um, just a daily practice. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to practice that handstand every day, just one handstand. So I can have, I think it's I'm not sure at the time of year, but I was like, I'm going to have a one-arm handstand by Christmas. Mm -hmm. If I do one handstand a day, it's going to be easy. And you had a two-arm handstand? I had a two-arm handstand that was 20, 30 seconds, but it was walking around on my hands. It was bent elbows, mm. bent knees, okay. banana position. Um, so I was like, okay, I only need to practice daily. Just commit to doing it. And by Christmas, I'm going to have a one-arm handstand. So I quickly, obviously, um, found out that wasn't the case. Oh. But it started the, the daily practice idea. So I would just randomly take, you know, kick up for a second, two seconds, take a picture, and that was my handstand of the day, and then I'd move on to the next day. So you literally just did one per day? Yes, yeah. Um, and then I went to Edo's workshop. So I went to Edo Portel's Movement X, um, and then after that got into the, the world of movement, like it opened my eyes up to you know, go, going back onto the gymnastic rings, um, and all the other movements that came with that, as well as having a process for the handstands. Mm. So I started online coaching with Edo, um, and that's like set the set the journey then um, to start to learn all the, the body weight strength and the, um, and the hand balancing. How was the online coaching with Edo, if I may ask? Um, it was, what was really good, to start with I found it frustrating because you'd get the program come in and there was not much to it. So there was lots of text and lots of writing, but not too much examples. So there wasn't videos of the movements and things like that. So it forced you to research, which I actually really enjoyed. Okay. So it forced me to go, okay, I know this, I know the name of the exercise, I don't know the exercise. And I couldn't ask anyone, there was no one else in Perth who I knew mm -hmm. who was doing this style of training. So I, it forced me to 
research online and it did mean I made some mistakes as well because you'd send the videos in to, to be checked and um, I'd get you know, an email back saying this is the wrong movement or so I now maybe had to research, research and explore some more. So it actually, especially as a coach, it really helped yeah. because it made me um, yeah, explore research. And, um, get a broader perspective. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so which helped uh, my understanding of the movements as well. Mm. And now you're not associated with Ido anymore? No, no, I worked with him for about two years, um, but slowly because my initial passion and the, the, the goal was to get this one arm handstand. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I still really enjoyed all the other work as well, but my main passion was just handstands, handstands, mm -hmm. handstands. And Ido's training is all around more of a um, global like train, no train everything. Yeah, no, don't specialize. Um, but I just kept coming back to that. Mm -hmm. So I was really then started to search um, online for information about hand balancing and hand balancers. So I started following all the big names in, in, the, hand, in the handstand world um, and reaching out to some of them and asking them questions. And um, yeah, and I knew after you know, a couple of years that that's the direction I wanted to go in. Mm -hmm. um, and being a coach, um, I still needed all the other elements and I still enjoyed them. But the number one thing was always handstands. Yeah. yeah, I can relate to that. Um, so how long did it take you from the point where you said you're going to have the one arm hand sent by Christmas? How long did it take you eventually? Um, that's the hard question because I still don't think I'm there. Oh. So I, the, it's like the, the goalposts just constantly keep moving. Because like on my on my right arm now, I can like consistently hold a good hold and uh, different positions and things uh, in the one arm handstand. But my left is still very inconsistent, mm. you know, and it's a struggle most days to get a ten second hold on my left. Mm. Um, so I still don't think I'm nowhere near where I want to get to, you know. And I'm trying to work on things like the one arm press and um, yeah, all the different cool shapes, the figures, and yeah. all that sort of thing they're still ahead of me, so I still see that I've got years to go. So it's the but hard you do question. Have the, you do have the diamond one arm. Yes, yeah, I have the diamond. So that was that initial thing I wanted, the, the diamond one arm handstand. Um, but I still want more and more and more. And that's yeah. the hardest thing is like people, that's the question I get asked all the time. How long does it take to get a one arm handstand? Yeah. So first, like what's a one arm handstand? People think a two arm handstand is uh, the first goal is a 60 second hold maybe mm -hmm. or is it a 10 second hold in a mm -hmm. two-arm handstand yeah. you know I normally say if someone can hold for 10 seconds they can handstand that's a handstand yeah um, so then does the same apply for a one-arm handstand is it 10 seconds is it five seconds is it the point where you actually yeah. start to correct and stay there for a while um, yeah so that's the hard thing yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, I've been training about six years now, mm. um, daily on handstands, um, and I started to get one three to four years into it. I was starting to balance on the on the right arm mm. okay. um, for 10, 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, but that's one of the things I really like is that it's consistently, uh, constantly aiming for that next thing. Um, what was the process like for you of learning a one arm handstand? Considering um, you have, I, in my opinion, you do have a one arm handstand. Um, fun and very frustrating mm. as well. Like, I, I really enjoy the process, and probably looking back, one of my um, challenges is that I really like the fun aspect of it so I play a little bit too much mm. and it's probably why my right arm is so strong compared to my left arm That's interesting. you know I can I can jump into a right arm one arm and kick up into one arm quite consistently now mm. where the left is still really far behind I have had some shoulder issues with my left side but um, yeah I'm just having you know, thousands and thousands more reps on the on the right side mm -hmm. because I can do the fun stuff yeah so um, probably a little bit too much play and messing around and doing the cool stuff where I'd probably be better off just doing more sets and reps and you know more piano work and just holding for duration mm -hmm. 
um, which I should that should be my main goal, and then the play should be on top, and that's how I try and coach it is to have this you know, 60, 70% mm. structure where you do the sets and the reps and um, all the positions perfectly and mm. then have play on top of it. Mm. Well, you know, a lot of my days previously were a quick warm up and then play. Did you always take care of your own pra uh, programming? No, so I've worked, so initially with Edo, um, <laughs> yeah. and then I've done some uh, workshops and things, so um, with Miguel Santana, um, and um, and then I reached out to Yaval, Yaval on hands, um, and I see him as like my main go-to, my main coach, and I've done some, um, I've been on the workshop with him, I've done um, the Thailand retreat, um, and then I was lucky enough to go to his house um, last, or this year, yeah, this year, um, and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with him there. Nice. So, and he's done some programming and that for me as well. So, I see him as my main go-to. Mm. Um, yeah. Comparing Yuval and Miguel, uh, they're very different from each other. Yeah. In my opinion, I only went to a workshop of Yuval. Yeah. And I had a full retreat with Miguel. Um, yeah, I guess what I want to ask is what. Is the essence for you? What do you take away from both teachers? Um, so yes, like I've, I've done a couple of weeks with both of them, mm -hmm. like done the week retreats with them, um, and they're both taught by the same person. Um, their coach is uh, Master Claude, Claude okay. Victoria. Um, so in terms of what they teach, the drills are actually very, very similar. Mm -hmm. um, but they are, it's their own personality that comes out, which is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's an age difference, or um, yeah, I'm not sure what it is. But the, the drills and the, the sets and their expectations are very, very similar, I find. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe that's what I hear when they coach me. You know, it's the, the things that I need to work on. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think they are similar, but very different people. Mm. You know, obviously different times of their lives in terms of their age and their family situation and things like that. Um, I think that's one of the things I resonate with Yaval very much. You know, he's a little bit more mature, um, has a family, um, you know, because that's my thing is juggling my family life and my, my yeah. training. Um, How does that work? Um, you have five kids and one five, is on the way? Yeah, and a dog. Yeah. And a dog. Yeah, if you've seen my videos, you've probably seen the, the dog more than any of them. Um, yeah, I've always been super busy. We've had kids from a young age. Um, I'm used to it, so I don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. And I love it and I wouldn't change it. Like, they're all active and they all join in with the handstands. And, That's cool. Um, yeah, so are it's you, fun. So are you teaching your children? No, I don't teach unless they ask. I play around with them. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter, who's just turned 15, she's a high-level gymnast. Um, I've so seen I've, some of that too. Yeah, I've helped her a bit with the handstands, but you know she gets a lot from her, the gymnastics. And she'll, I'll be training, and she'll come out, run out, and no, no warm up, will just jump up into a handstand yeah. and be in my handstand picture. Yeah. You know, she doesn't really train with me too much at home, but she comes out and we'll play, and you know, the younger kids will just join in. Um, and then my seven-year-old has just started uh, in development squad for gymnastics, mm -hmm. so I think he's going to be um, be really good as well. Um, and he's already holding a headstand now, so we're going to get That some. must feel amazing. Yeah, it's fun. But again, like I don't know any different. Like, that's, yeah. I've, I've always been busy um, with that family life, and then they've always joined in and played and been active, and yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, what so. about your wife? Does she do any handstand? Um, she can handstand, but does chooses not to. Like just does doesn't join in. She's she um, teaches group fitness and when she's not pregnant. Oh, okay. So, yeah. she's pregnant <laughs> most of the time. Um, yeah. So yeah, she joins in occasionally. She can do a handstand. She says she can't, but that's that. She's comparing herself to you know the one arm handstand and things. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, and you just opened a gym recently with some friends, right? Yes. Yeah, we recently opened in June, so we've worked together uh, in different ways for the last couple of years. But yes, we just opened a gym uh, in Perth. How did you make that decision? Um, it, I think we just got to that stage. We we've oh. been teaching classes elsewhere, um, and then we we were doing personal training separately. Um, but we just 
because we have the same interests and training philosophies and it just made sense instead of being a like, competition with each other yeah. over clients and things, um, we wanted to come together and you know, build something and um, grow together as a, as a business. Um, and we all learn off each other as well because we have slightly different passions in terms of the, which movements and things. Um, yeah, it, it's great. Yeah. It's really nice. I mean, it's very clean, we have a lot of space for moving, and I love the glossy floor. Yeah, yeah, the floor is great, uh, especially for hand balancing. It's, yeah, it's, How has it been going so far? Have people been coming in? Yeah, we had, we had quite a big following already. Individually, we had a following like um, for private coaching, mm -hmm. um, and then because we were already doing some classes and things as, as our, our business, uh, we, yeah, we had a following already, so it's been great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've been, only been open like five, kind of six months, and um, yeah, it's it's been amazing. Mm. Yeah. I want to talk a bit more about your training right now. Yeah. What does it look like, and how often do you train? Um, so I definitely train every day. Mm -hmm. um, one of the challenges is with the new business um, mm. and the kids and the family and everything is to try and fit in training. I imagine. So, you know, um, I think of training as being at least sixty minutes, ninety minutes, sets and reps and and things um, and some days I don't get that but I will always get a 20 minute session mm -hmm. so minimum will be 20 30 minutes but I also teach either one-on-ones or classes and all classes every day so um, I over demonstrate a lot of the time mm. so I'm always on my hands yeah so I add that as you know um, extra sets and reps mm -hmm. as well so my goal is to, to try and get at least 60, 90 minutes per day. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably average four or five times a week on that, but I'm definitely on my hands 20 to 30 minutes every day. So this would mean that you practice a lot of basics. I mean, not practice in the sense of practicing, but by showing your students. Yes, yeah. Uh, do you think that helps for oh. you to, to advance? Yes, massively, especially with um, anyone wanting to learn a one-arm handstand. Um, obviously they need a strong two arm handstand mm -hmm. but one of the biggest things is just to be able to kick up and yeah. go into a handstand easily, efficiently and repetition after repetition. Yeah. So you know if it takes you 10 times to kick up into a handstand and you're trying to learn a one arm handstand mm -hmm. then you have to do so many more kick ups and use so much more energy just to practice your drills. Yeah. So having that um, kick to straight into handstand every time, you never miss a handstand is so important. Yeah. And obviously if you're teaching, if I want to teach uh, you know, a shape in a handstand and I want to demonstrate it to my class, I want to be able to kick up first time and it to be easy. Yeah. And, not uh, think about it. Not even think about it, yeah. yeah. So um, it really helps. So it carries over to efficiency when you're training and mm -hmm. also good demonstration then when you're um, demonstrating to clients and things. Yeah. I was reflecting on your class uh, I attended yesterday with Evo last night. Yeah. Um, so we did, just for you, so you know what we did, we did um, entries. And my entries when I have my hands on the floor, you noticed, aren't 100% yes. there. Yes, yeah. But when I just kick up with momentum, <laughs> I usually get it on. Okay, so I was wondering, if it makes sense to practice one arm handstands at all in terms of fingertip holds. Yeah. If I can get up into a handstand with my entry, but not with every entry, you know what I mean? Yeah. So all I would what I'd recommend you do is is make that part of your practice. So if you're doing your one arm drills, then when you enter into the handstand, make sure you're doing the one you're not so good at. Mm. So you start exploring and building the strength for all your different entries so you can always do it. Because um, what people tend to do is they think, okay, I'm doing the one arm drill, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go up into a handstand the way I always go into yeah. it. And that just reinforces that pattern. And it might be a good pattern, but it might be very limited. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you can do every entry and make your circle of balance very big. Um, the only thing you'll have to watch with that is if it uses up too much energy. Mm. So then uh, obviously your one arm practice would go downhill if you're starting to get yeah. tired because it's taking you five kick ups to. Mm. Yeah. But you was pretty good. You wasn't falling out of hands that much. Yeah, I was, I was just uh, wondering if 
All the two arm stuff, including entries, gets better automatically if you practice fingertip holds because you would get stronger yes. in that too. Yeah, I mean the biggest the biggest thing with most people, and I'm sure I've done it, um, start the one arm practice way too early. Mm. Um, yeah, but what I should saw of your hands down yesterday, you're fine to go to to okay, that work straight away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you just want to have a solid two arm handstand that can comfortably hold for 60, yeah. 90 seconds and um, yeah, have control and, and especially your shapes because mm. most people will start in straddle and if you, as long as your straddle's strong and you've got good flexibility, it makes it so much easier. So to sum it up, what would you say are the parameters to take off before starting the journey to a one-arm handstand? Um, so consistent entries to handstand. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter which entry. So it's the but at least one. Yeah, just one that's consistent. Yeah. So you can always kick into a two-arm handstand, you know, nine times out of ten. Mm -hmm. um, and then being able to comfortably hold 60, 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and ideally, yeah, consistently as well. Because mm -hmm. if, if I had to choose um, between consistently kicking up to a 30 second or 20 second handstand, 10 out of 10 times, I'd take that over having one hold in a hundred that's 60 seconds. Yeah. You want to have that consistency. Um, yeah. It's a hard one. It's easy to look at someone and say, yes, you, you're, you're fine to go and do into one hour work. It's very hard to put it down in paper what that should be because everyone's you know, individual. Because yeah. you might have someone who's very consistent going into a handstand and can hold for a long time. But if their mobility is really bad, their one arm is just going to be shocking. Mm, it's going to be so, heavier. Yeah, it's, it's very individual. Mm. How would you approach the journey to a one arm? From, from a two-arm handstand? Yeah. In terms of drills, um, what would you start with? So, um, going a weight shift first. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people go to um, flag work very mm -hmm. quickly. So you know, when you're taking your toes down and touching on either side, yeah. that type of thing. Um, my side flexion is still not very good. Um, I learned more of a weight shift first What's the difference there? So you can flag, so I can flag over to the side and shift. Okay. Like this. So you mean um, actually moving shift away. over yeah. so instead of bending over. Yes, yeah. So you want to feel weight going to the working arm mm -hmm. as opposed to some people when they do a flag or shift over to one side, the weight actually goes away and the shoulder moves around mm -hmm. um, to counteract the, the side bend. Which is very different. That's not a one-arm handstand. Mm -hmm. So you like you can go in a straight handstand position and then do a slight lean over to get the weight shift, mm -hmm. um, and that's more taking you towards the one-arm handstand than having an amazing okay. side flexion. Mm -hmm. So you can get a one-arm handstand with no side flexion. Now, ideally, it makes it much easier if you have both. So the person who's very flexible and has really good side flexion, mm -hmm. but also does the weight shift. It's going to be much easier for them to get one arm instead. Mm. Yeah. yeah, probably depends a lot on the body structure. Yes. How the body's built. Yeah. It's different for sure for somebody who has narrow hips than somebody who has wide hips. Yes. Yeah. So it's very, very individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'd say that weight shift is the most important thing to start to understand. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm a big. I've never used the wall in, in one arm drills. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, two arm drills, yes, but uh, one arm drills, I've never used it, so I never teach that. Is there a particular reason? Just because I've never done it. And then okay. the people coaching me have never given it to me, mm -hmm. um, and I've never seen them do it, so I've never explored it. I think one of the biggest things with one arm handstand drills at the moment, like with the two arm handstand drills, um, there's thousands and thousands of people been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. So we have this big, um, all this information from all of those experiments, if you like, mm -hmm. um, seeing what works, what doesn't work. So there's lots of information. With the one arm work, it's very, um, it's still quite a small amount of people teaching and then teaching a number of people so you can actually see what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. So I think one of the things now is that everyone's saying, you know, this is the way to go or that's the way to go. And it's based on 
a hundred people, not based on ten thousand people. So the information that's out there on what draws in the best is very personal and individual. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting over the next few years to, for more information to come out because more people are doing it. Yeah. So it's you know, it's more research and stuff. But there's some, you know, you can't um, fake the balance. Your center of balance needs to be in the right place, above the base of support. If not, you can't balance. So, you know, it's easy to see if you know what you're looking at. To look at someone in a handstand, who, if it's a photo, you can see whether they're balanced or not. So there's some principles that need to be the same. Mm. Um, but the drills, and I'm, I know people that are using the wall for one-arm drills um, and having success. So um, the drills can change. Yeah. But we still need to have those basic principles to, to balance. Yeah. Also, I feel like um, it's such an internal process because it's about the body understanding to react. Yes. It's not something you do consciously, so it's kind of hard to put one concept over everybody. Yes. That fits everybody. Yeah. Because it's one of those things as well, like we get lots of questions like press the handstand's an interesting mm -hmm. one because it's not like doing a bicep curl. Like yeah. I have a bicep curl, I just flex my bicep and my elbow bends. Very simple. Like it's yeah. very simple, people can understand that. But you know, when you're trying to explain actually what happens in a press to handstand or a one-arm handstand, it's not like you're firing one muscle or people think it's a core exercise or you know, they're asking for you know, explanation on how to do it. Yeah. And you can try to explain it, but what that means to you might be completely different to yeah. what it means to me. Um, what you think about while you're doing it, what you're concentrating on, because there's so much happening subconsciously and yeah. that you're not aware of, um, yeah. it's very hard to explain. So, and you, if you spend 10, 15, 20 seconds <laughs> in one of the one arm drills, just a weight shift or going up onto piano, onto fingertips, um, and spending time there, that I think that's the only way of doing it. Yeah. Just giving the body time to figure it out. Yeah. In yeah. that position. And it all changes then, you know, initially when you're going up onto five fingers, um, four fingers, three fingers, you can do that and have equal weight in both hands. Mm -hmm. And that's the mistake most people make. Uh, or the learning curve is, is learning to shift weight into the working arm mm -hmm. and decrease as you decrease the fingers. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see people on one fingertip but their finger will be like bending so over and like yeah. now basically strengthening their finger. Yeah. Where when you go up onto one, one finger, ideally it should just be, you know, 5% of it. your body weight, 2% yeah. of your body weight just in that finger, not 40%. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, everyone knows that when they're learning and that's just part of the, the progression. And then over time, you'll, you know, lightly be touching the finger. And then when you start to take that support and assistant finger up, everything changes again because mm -hmm. now the body can rotate yeah, yeah, yeah. so learning to deal with that rotation is you know another yeah. six yeah. months 12 months for people it's yeah you know, that's the challenge depending on your body awareness too yeah yeah where you're strong what you've done previously um yeah it's very hard yeah cool um what are your near goals like what what uh, shape or what are you working on um, right now? Daily now I'm working on consistency between left and right. Mm -hmm. So not just be able to hold a left arm, one arm. How do you right deal arm. with that? So I do um, drills of right arm, one arm, going into left arm, one arm. Now most people would tell you to do weaker arm first yeah. and then go into dominant arm. What I find is that if I have a position that I'm comfortable with on the right, even if I hold it for two or three seconds, then when I go straight into my left side, it feels a better position. So it's like the right, the left side is following the right. Um, so I'm doing drills like that every day. Um, I tend to be doing, because I'm trying to get my kick to one arm or my jump to one arm on my right very consistent. Um, I'll also do sets where I just do an entry on the right arm, so I'll be jumping in with the arm raised, jumping onto the a right one arm, 
transferring over to the left and then aiming to get at least a 10 second hold on the left. Yeah. So I'm doing those daily. So and they're becoming more consistent now. So that's my um, short term goal is to get that very consistent to be able to hold comfortably on both sides and just be able to alternate side to side consistently. Um, and then on the right hand, right hand side, I'm working towards harder skills. So like I say, all the different kick up variations and entries um, on different heights. And then um, very close to Lara to Brock on the, on the right. Um, I've caught it a couple of times and then fell out of it. So that's, that feels like it's close-ish. Um, they're the two, two main ones that I'm working towards. I have one last question for you. Yesterday, um, you told me that I need to get up on planes. Yes. Why was that? Because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, I don't believe in people don't need to be on canes. I think blocks are really, really useful for learning the one arm handstand. Um, blocks are definitely easier to balance once you get used to them. So, there's some uh, benefits of that mm -hmm. and then some negatives of that as well so the benefits is uh, I can jump up onto a block and c quite consistently hold for 30 plus seconds mm -hmm. on my right arm but on the floor it's uh, half that amount of, of consistency um, so what it means is I can spend a lot of time under tension in a one arm handstand on the blocks mm -hmm. um, it gives me a, an out as well so if on my wrists are getting sore um, flexibility wise it allows you to be not quite so open mm -hmm. because the, when you close the hand if I open the hand there's more flexibility demand yeah. so that allows you to get out of it so it can be more comfortable on the the danger is though because it is easier to balance is you always are drawn towards the blocks mm. because you can consistently hold there which potentially could mean that your floor hand balancing decreases because you spend more time in the blocks um, Interesting. So I try and do both. But with the canes, my canes I use as well don't have much flex in them. Mm. The ones that move around more, uh, it's actually easier to balance. Um, again, so they're easy, even easier than the blocks. Um, but I just like the canes because they're fun. Yeah. And, you know, and they do open up uh, some different drills you can do and some um, transitions and stuff that you can't do on the floor because the floor gets in the way. Yeah. Um, but they're just fun. I desperately wanna wanna do canes, but I just can't handle balancing on blocks. Yeah. Like the gap between me balancing on blocks and balancing on the floor is between beginner and intermediate. Yeah. It's so it just insane. means you haven't spent enough time on the blocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone you speak to has spent any you know, good amount of time on them, they become easier. Yeah. But to be able to just do the block walking. Um, and lateral block walks and the, the climbing up and down on the blocks uh, is so good for your one arm because uh, it teaches you the elevation, so the push. Um, and also, you can think about it can become a little bit of a challenge or a game because you're doing something with the block and you're concentrating on the movement of the blocks as opposed to just thinking, overthinking a lot of the time about what you're doing in the handstand. Yeah. I think the thing in my case is that um, I can't hold a handstand on blocks. So I'm wondering how you would handle the transition from floor to blocks. Um, well, initially, obviously, you'd work on your two arm handstand on blocks and just make that consistent. So it might be repeating some of the work you've done on the floor. Yeah. So some of the wall drills where you're pulling on off the wall. So basically just going through the same process as if you're yeah. burning the handstand on the floor. Yes. Mm. Obviously some things are going to be a little bit different. So like if you're pulling off the wall and you use your fingertips, if your heels are on the wall and you use your fingertips, now you don't have fingertips because mm. you're gripping hold of the block. So some things will feel a little bit different. Um, but normally if you just spend enough time there and be close to the wall if you need to and like step into the, yeah. the freestanding and make that comfortable, you'll You'll learn it very quickly. I've started training blocks in January and now it's December. <laughs> I haven't done it daily though okay. and I yeah. get pretty upset with blocks yeah. and I try to avoid them sometimes because 
yeah. it seems like it's just so much harder yeah. for me, which is weird. But that might be telling you something about your two arm handstand on the floor, is that mm -hmm. you're overusing maybe your fingertips or something where... Very possible. Yeah, so then when we take your fingertips away yeah. on the blocks, you feel like you can't balance. So it's yeah. one of the drills we done yesterday is we've yeah. taken the fingertips away while you're balancing and you notice that was quite challenging. really do it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, uh, do you think blocks are a good tool to learn that? To learn to balance more on on the heels of your hands? Yes, yeah. Yeah, to bring it back. It's a bit like when you stand on your feet. If you lean forward on the weights in your toes, but if you bring the balance back and stand with a good posture, you'll feel the, the weight come out of your toes. More efficient. Yes, yeah, so it's more efficient. So on the blocks, it's easy to just do the drill where you release the fingers and then balance it just on the arm. Cool. Well, thank you very much. So much good information. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for being on the show and for you. Also, thank you for watching. And remember that the world is your playground, so just go ahead and do whatever you love. I'll put all the relevant links down below, as always, so you can check out Paul and his gym and maybe also come to Perth to learn from him. And yeah, I'll see you next Monday. Thank you.